Welcome back to another episode of Podcast P presented to you by Prize Picks, a wave sports and entertainment original. We are back here again at NBA Summer League down in Vegas at my very own barbershop. Smooth's Hair Gallery. Go ahead and get crisp. You dig? Clipper Nation, long awaited. You guys been in the comments saying you want this individual. We finally locked him in. We got him here in the building. One of my favorite young fellas in the league, Mr. Long Hair Don't Care. Even though I think I think eh, it might be a little fake, but he said it ain't. It's my boy, one of the swaggiest swag guys in the league, Terrence Man. What's up, man? What's up, y'all? What's up? My boy. Thanks for having me. Like we said, we're in a barbershop. We know you dread it up. We had this conversation about how much you pay your barber for a haircut. How much you spend it for a cut? We live in LA, so you know, they gonna tax you out there. It's crazy so you get taxed it's, for a cut. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's about a hundred, 150 on, on a bad day, 150. A for the haircut? But yeah. You, all they you come get to, is the side. They come to the crib though, it's convenience. You're paying for convenience, you know, you know what I'm saying? See, they was on me, cause I, I, I pay my barber 200, right? And they like, oh, I need to be a barber now. You're getting paid 200 for a cut. The barber taking advantage of you. You should get your barber like, yeah, you should. You, you know should. what I'm saying? It's a tough business. The barber taking advantage of you, P. He taking advantage of me? How they going to pay rent in LA? Listen, listen. <laughs> Paying 30 for a cut. Where do you get a, a haircut for $200? In your living room. See, that's young money talk. But anyway, I'm going to start my question off. T Man, I got a question. Who oh, I don't believe is true neither. What's the word? I don't believe it's true and it can't be true. They say you carry at all times a Rajah Rondo Kentucky <laughs> basketball card. If it is so true, one, can you please show me this card? And two, was Rajah Rondo your inspiration growing up or something for hoops? So one, I'm going to show you the card. Oh, He shit. got the card. Oh, no, he didn't. Uh, I might have it. I might have it. Don't new wallet, it. new wallet alert. No, nah, I just got a new wallet. You know what I'm saying? Don't tell me he got the card on him. <laughs> but you know what it is. Let me see this card. Uh, he got you see it. How dirty it is. Yeah, you see, see the dirt on this. You see the dirt on that? Let me see this card. Yes. Wow. This is a look. Look at this, y'all. This is really the Rajah Rondo card that I guess he really carries at all times. What part of Rondo's game inspired you? I just watched him all the time. Like I was, I'm I'm from Massachusetts, so yeah. Celtics. Everybody's talking Celtics, Celtics this, Celtics that. So I was watching Rondo all the time, talking about him all the time, and my girlfriend at the time would hear me talk about him all the time. So she's like, she got me that for my birthday. She gave me the card. I had an AU game that weekend. I think I had like thirty or something, and I had it in my wallet. I was like, I'm never taking it out. And then fast forward, fast forward, we play with Rondo as a teammate. Crazy. And you got to share that moment with him. Talk about that. It was crazy. I told him. I mean, he, he was excited about it. He's like, damn, that's crazy. I, I really had it in my wallet since seventh grade. And it looked like it's in great condition still, too. Because I had to I had to yeah, put it in the case. The card itself is probably a little that shit needs to be in my wallet at all times. That's the mo that means more than anything to you in your life. Yeah, huh? I feel I'm superstitious a little bit with certain things, and I feel like this is one of the reasons, you know, Do why. Do don't know that? Yeah, he know. You should have had him sign it, no? Nah, it's, it's too much. I'm too, so I don't want nobody, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, he proved me wrong today. Come on now. I really thought that he wasn't was waiting true. on that question. I really was because I'm like, he done, pro he done had to take a shower or wash some jeans and forgot the card or something. It done messed up, but you really have it. That's that's special, man. That's that's a story. Look, the NBA season is done, but that doesn't mean that prize picks is. Jackie, what's the next sport that's making you some money? Baseball, baby. <laughs> I'm cashing in with my boys Mookie Betts and Juan Soto. Yeah, they're over there helping me out. But wait, I'm talking too much. Let the people know what Prize Picks is, Dallas. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app. You pick two to six players like the video on your screen, then pick if they will have more or less than their Prize Picks projection. 
Remember, you aren't competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. You can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. And on top of that, all first time users that deposit and use our promo code podcast P will receive a hundred percent instant deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That means if you deposit $20, prize picks will give you $20. If you deposit $100, prize picks will give you $100. Dallas, what we do at this time? Cha-ching! So, T-Man, we're at Summer League, and I want to talk a little bit about your experience uh, heading into Summer League. You played four years at Florida State, and I want to know, or just explain to the viewers, what was the biggest difference when you got to Summer League? Like, what was something that you had to adjust to? Was was it not what you expected? Was it what you were expecting? How was your Summer League experience? For me, it was great because I came in only promised a two-way and I turned it into a contract and that was, you know, the mentality I had going in. So for me personally, it was great. Um, but the biggest difference was terminology, like from college to the NBA terminology, um, only having a couple of weeks to prepare for it and guys throwing a whole bunch of different stuff at you. So that was the hardest part for me. And then also I had to play point guard the whole time. And I never did that. I haven't done that since high school, you know, in, in college, I played only on the wing. So, um, it was a big adjustment for me. But then I walked out there and I was like, these are all guys I've been playing against for years. So I was cool. So you just felt comfortable like instantly. Yeah. Give the viewers an example of maybe something that you were used to in college. Was it just like play calling or reads that the that they're giving you? What's what? Give me I an think, example. I think it was play calling because in college you, you have names like, you know, you use other colleges, Kentucky, this, this, that. And NBA use numbers and it's all the same stuff out of the same sets. You know what I mean? So you'll say the same number for the same play, but it's a different look. You know what I mean? So it was just that that, that stuff was a little confusing. Cause you come down, but at Kentucky, it's the same play. You know exactly what you're doing, you know? Yeah. And I, I mean, I got the chance to watch you. I didn't know. I was new to the team. So, I, you know, I got traded that summer. So when I got traded, I traded that, that week, no? Yeah, that week of, of Summer League. So I was out here and, you know, I, I, I was keeping tabs and watching. And, you know, obviously I was going through the show, shoulder surgery stuff. Um, but then I did notice like, oh, okay, like he's got a bright future. He can literally, like I saw that instantly, like he can literally do anything and everything on the court. Now fast forward to see your work ethic, how hard you work on your game. It puts you in position to, to where you at now. So shout out to you, all the guys out there, go to summer league on a two way and you end up getting a contract. T man is, is, you know, a testimony of what hard work will do to you. So shout out T man for that. Appreciate that. And with that said, T-Man, what's this, like your fifth year you yeah. going on? Going on fifth year. Young fan. Uh, that mean you've been on the Clippers your whole damn career, yeah, man, right? Yeah, ain't moved yet. Playing with that big nose motherfucker over there. <laughs> that one over there. So, <laughs> Five give me, years in. I want you to give me a little insight on when you first met Big Nose and what's the biggest thing that he ever taught you <laughs> or you learned from you him. You full of shit today, boy. <laughs> I don't remember exactly when I first met P. But one of the things I take away from him is a lot of the off the court stuff, like how he handles his time with people. And I think I feel like I implemented that into myself and my brand, like, you know, just taking the time of day to, you know, introduce himself, talk to people, making people feel comfortable when they're around. Um, I think that's the biggest thing when people ask me about P, like, you know, how's PG? Is he a cool guy? People love asking that question. How's PG? How's Kawhi? So. I think he just, right. yeah, yeah, he, he right. it's a great guy, great vet, taught me a lot of things, but I think that's one of the biggest ones, you know, how to handle yourself off the court. I appreciate that. I know when we met, it was under the circumstances of you having to guard me and match up with me. Because like I said, I was coming through the, the shoulder surgery, so... You so know, tell, I wasn't, tell everybody we couldn't touch you. We couldn't. Yeah, we couldn't brace you. Uh, uh, couldn't, yeah, couldn't, couldn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How you play? You it was my Paul George. You can't. You can't put your arm. Nothing. You can't touch it. I, I had the red. I had the red. You know how the quarterbacks wear the little red, the red pennies. The red penny. I had the red you know pennies, and I, I was torching them. I ain't gonna lie. So all you had to do is slide your feet. Like <laughs> that's all you could do. Hands behind your back. Yeah, oh my god. Awesome. He was probably talking. He was talking mess too. Like you can't guard me. I know. I was. I was feeling myself. It was fun. And But for me, it was fun because, like, you know, I, I love competing. I love competition. And, you know, it was a way for me to stay young, playing against the young guys, you know, getting my cardio conditioning, working on my game, you know, working on all my stuff. Um, but that was, like, the first time I met, you know, who was there? It was you, Amir, Jerome, Jerome Fee. Fee. Yeah. Mott. Mott. It was a good group of, Derek like, the young Wallen. guys that I was, you know, rehabbing with. 
And uh, yeah, they they was they was getting some work. They was getting that work, but it was fun because he was competitive. Killing, it was fun for you. He was he was killing. It was, but it was fun for me. He was killing too. You know what I'm saying? Like he had yeah, to guard too. Me, like you know what I'm saying? He hard. also had to guard us too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't like I wasn't untouchable for that long. Like, nah, yeah, it, it was, was a couple, like a good like it was weeks of it was like three four weeks yeah, of straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a pretty big stretch. It, it, it was battles. T man, P talks about you know kind of the difficulty of being a Clipper in Laker town and how sometimes fans bother him. With your experience being in LA and being a Clipper, kind of talk me through what that's like and have you had any, you know, funny interactions with fans or people talking to you? What's that been like? I mean, it's crazy. Like you could feel you could feel the energy when you walk around, when you walk into certain places. Sometimes I walk in a certain place and I could feel that somebody's a Lakers fan. They know who mm -hmm. I am. You know what I mean? You get yeah, that. Yep. They might say something, you know what I'm saying? They might treat you a little weird and like, yeah, it's, they take that shit way too serious. But um, you could feel it. It's crazy out there. Like You could really feel how they how they feel about the Lakers and how they feel about the Clippers. Yeah, nah, for sure. It's a Lakers. It's a Lakers town. It sure is. Yeah, and he, he the sure biggest is. Lakers fan over there. Yeah, look at him. It sure is. What? What'd you say about the Lakers? Huh? Okay, Dallas. Everybody knows I'm a SoCal kid, but it's, it's just funny to me, like, if I'm somewhere and they like, ah, oh, you should be a Laker or – like, come to L.A. And I'm like, like I'm in L.A. Bro, what? And what you I mean, want me to do? We all L.A. at this point. Like, just support L.A. You know what I mean? Um, so that, that shit do be interesting. The funniest shit was, I don't know, it was when I first got traded and I went to Universal and I'm there, you know, with, with the homies. I think Reg was with me. You know, we was just there enjoying uh, the, you know, Universals at the time. We just got here. I think it was a Halloween shit. And that was the first time I heard that, like, come to the Lakers like you should have been a Lakers like I'm in LA like and I'm playing that, in the same that's arena, not good enough like, yeah I'm in the same, the same arena, arena like, that's, that's not good enough if the Lakers fans still say this when y'all get y'all own arena it's something wrong they, yeah. they can stop now I right. can understand if they said that because y'all had the same arena sharing it right. but y'all got you into it now right on like, that subject on. we do uh, very fortunate that we do get our own space shout out Steve Ballmer getting us to into a dome. I talked about, you know, earlier how we shared a space with the Lakers at, at Crypto. I almost slipped up and said Staples. At Crypto, <laughs> we shared a space there. Uh, it's a weird dynamic because, like, you know, I was telling him we'll go in the weight room and Bron got his shit. Nah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, that's that's crazy. It's crazy. It's the craziest shit. Bron got his shit over here. You don't touch With his, his shit. logo on it. Yeah, his, logoed out. His logo's on it? Yes. His logo, oh my gosh. And it, and it just feels like it's the Lakers. And, it's, and, and the locker room is right by their uh, – uh, the weight room is right by their locker room. Like we got to pass their locker room to get to, get to the weight shit. room. Yeah, so it's it's just a weird dynamic. Um, what else? Like what what else is is weird to you about that dynamic of us sharing the space with the Lakers? The work, like the vibe, the workers. You know, what I'm saying you know they're all Lakers fans. <laughs> you know right, what I'm saying? Yeah, they'd be like this way, man. You're this right, way, right. come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you you this way, come on. Right, you, you, right. On. It almost like it feels like we're the little bros over they there. They treat y'all different. They treat us different. <laughs> Uncomfortable. <laughs> they treat us different. Once y'all get that, that 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 ring, they gonna treat you right now. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be. Y'all gotta get it. I want you to get it, dopey. I really do. In the grand scheme of it. They still going to hold the, what, 17, 18 championships to your one. They're not hearing that. They're not hearing. They're going to be like, well, you don't got, you know what I'm saying? As yeah. soon as we win one, you don't got 17, though. Well, y'all got to prove the point. Once y'all get the ring and show, make a new stamp for the world. Let them know this how you win. Then shut, shut us down. Shut, shut us, down. us down. I'm with that. That's all I can say. Shut us down, man. The different lighting. The, in the different home, lighting. Man. Yeah. You know, that shit is like, yeah. like upscale. <laughs> yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. But the, the Clipper games are way more fun. Like the Laker games, it's quiet. The fans don't like to cheer, at least for you guys. You know, the environment. Yeah. It's a lot more from a fan's perspective. The Clipper, the Clipper games are more entertaining. Yeah, that's what sure. I hear. I want to tell you, ask you something, T. But, uh, we know my boy played with Westbrook in the past. You a young guard coming up in the NBA. How was it your first reaction to playing with Russ and meeting him and everything when he was on your team? It was crazy for me um, just because I grew up watching him a lot too. So I, I was just a big fan. Like I follow OKC on Facebook still to this day. I, I go on Facebook <laughs> and I still got OKC notifications <laughs> popping up because I used page. to do it. Yeah, fan page. <laughs> now I'm being dead serious. Fan page, I used to follow it because of Russ. Yeah. So it's just crazy being on the same team as him great teammate like I remember um our first or second game together 
he got subbed out and he stood up and coached me the whole second quarter, like first end of first, second quarter. Um, didn't sit down one time and like helped me through the game, coached me up. So um, I just have the ultimate respect for him. Man. That's Russ all the way. Like Russ is 100 all the way. Like that, that, and that's why I wanted to bring him over because I think he just brings so much value to the team. And he's a team first guy, like 100%. That's what people don't see about him. He's team first all the way. You know what I mean? Look what he just did. He right, definitely right. team first what he all did the way. With this contract, you know, yeah. taking a cut like that to come still play basketball. You got a, you got a crazy. Uh, lineup of of teammates you've had. Give him, give him to it. What, what what you saying? I mean, he got me, why <laughs> <laughs> Lou, uh, Russ, uh, Rondo, Rondo, damn Rondo, Boogie, Russ. Boogie, <laughs> Serge, Bledsoe, Bled, hey. Pat, Pat Bev, John Wall. John, John Wall, Wall. You, got a, you got a lineup of uh, teammates. That's crazy. That's, that's, that's 10 crazy lineups. That's like lineup. 10 all-stars yeah, in there. That's 10, and, and we probably forgetting some. It's letting you know where you're going to end up. All-star too. That's what I'm saying. Nah, no, it's, been, it's been crazy. It's been a crazy five years, like being able to play with guys that you really look up to who really had a real presence in the league and stuff like that. Learning from them, learning different things from everybody. Um, it's just crazy, man. Talk about, well, you know, we just t- touched on Russell Westbrook. He's one of my favorite players because he competes, he brings it every night. But talk about in practice, does he bring that same energy when you guys are just doing practice? Anytime he crosses those lines, he's bringing that energy. Like anytime, <laughs> anytime he walks out that locker room, crosses the line, it's on. Like the energy's up. The people don't understand it. It is tough. A NBA schedule is tough. And for him to have that energy Every day. I was shocked. I'm not going to lie. I was like. When I first became his teammate and I got to OKC, I'm like, all right. So he definitely, he probably drink Red Bulls like in the morning, Red Bull, like in the afternoon. Like he is something that triggers this energy. It is pure energy, like from start to finish. I've never seen a moment where he was just flat. Like he's just always like elevated in practice. He, you know, talking shit. He running up and down the court. Like he trying to dunk shit and walkthroughs. Like he probably sleep with energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do he have so much energy though? That is crazy. I don't know, man. His kids got energy like that. His son is the the split like exact version of him. Hybrid. That's funny. Energy That's crazy on a on a hundred. Somebody gonna play I love football his, son, his family there. Yeah, all oh, that energy bro, knock somebody out. So you guys have been teammates for four years now, and we're gonna play a little clipper a little clipper game and so i'm going to ask you guys a couple questions okay. kind of like a voting system but i want to know the answers to a few of these questions so what has been the most epic player moment you guys have experienced in a clipper practice i got one practice go that was quick when i dunked on Ooh. Dunked on oh, crazy. Oh, there you go, team. I don't man. know if I got the footage, but Ooh, we can find. I know we can find it somehow. Find like, he, he, he dunked did. on him crazy. He did catch me crazy. He, left it, it left it on Yo, the shoulder? I don't know where he was at. He was somewhere. He uh, did catch me. Somewhere on this shoulder, somewhere. I don't know. It was one of those, like, I didn't expect you to do that. And how it did, was one of those, like, oh, okay, you you you, you jump for real. How did you, how did you feel, though, <laughs> when it happened to you? I, I felt stupid. I felt stupid because it was like a stop play too. Like, yeah, it was like it, it wasn't was like, like we was going up and down. Nah, it was like one possession at a time. <laughs> but I know he always feels like he can make a play, so you got to lull him. You know, you got to make him fall asleep. It definitely was that. Can, can I ask you? Have you got revenge? Uh, not like I don't that. Think I, I don't think I don't for too man. <laughs> you gotta find this video. Did you stare at him after you were done, or did you act like he you've been the there whole, before? Everything flexed on me. <laughs> it must have been nasty. Nah, that was like, it, that it was, was, it was ago, a good one. That was like two years ago. It was. was I'm gonna make sure ago. that never sees the light of day. Please, p- producers, please find that footage and put it on. The yeah, that, that, that tape ain't getting out. <laughs> was it off two feet or was it a one foot? Like, what was the dunk? It was one foot. It was reverse. Oh, like I, I nas dribbled. I think. And I, I look, I look like I was gonna pass, and I just yeah, it, it, that's exactly what again, happened. Do it again, what you do? <laughs> like, that's look, exactly what happened. Put him to sleep, like oh, I'm about to pass, and I was like, oh, the rim's right here. They got oh, the rim yeah. right there. He, he turned, he me. turned that he shit over. He was stuck under the rim a little bit, like yeah, because I he was going out under the basket, so and I, I'm thinking like, oh, okay, he's probably about to like, you know, dribble it out, but he, he I see his momentum now going towards the rim. So I'm like, oh, okay, like reverse layup. Let goofy, me go. I'm gonna go get this. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! 
Woo! Stop play. Everybody screaming. Everybody going crazy. It, I mean, but it, 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 it happens. P got this Birdman picture. When you get that tape, <laughs> that you make sure you get a poster and put that in your crib. Make sure you put that in your crib. That was that was one of the the because you know we don't practice that much, so that was probably like when we actually got to like go live and get after it. That was probably one of the like biggest moments in one of our practices. Top three. That was top three. I think I think ultimately like the practices that we did have when we had the roster of Kawhi, myself, Pat Bev, Lou Will, like those were some competitive yeah, practices yeah, when we yeah. did practice. Because the second unit was a starting second unit on any any team, like Lou Will, Trez, Pat Bev. Who else we had? We had a... Uh, you talking about before Reg got there? Before Reg got there. Even when Reg got there, we yeah. had some competitive practices. Jamichael Green. Jamichael Green, Mo Harkless. Yep. Um... Like it, it Patrick was a, Patterson, Pat Patterson, get in there and light you up. Landry Shamit, like it was, it was. Shout out to Lou retire. Shout out Lou. So the next question is, who's like the guy on your team or a coach, coach or player that gets you guys like the most hype? You know, in a timeout, maybe before you guys run through the tunnel. Who's the guy that like you know rallies the troops we'll and gets you guys ready person. to go? I was gonna say Dante. That's the same person. I was gonna <laughs> say Tay. Totally Tay, say it. Tay is the one that's you, you, you I don't yeah. know if I yeah, can curse, yeah, no. but yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hold back on that. But but he's the one cursing, he's the one like yeah, and, and if you're like, not playing if you're not playing like he wants you to be playing, he's letting you know yeah. off rip as soon as you get to the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's yeah. gonna he gonna get in your ass <laughs> a little bit. So the next one is which clipper teammate is surprisingly funny? Who who would you say has the most jokes on the team? The most surprisingly funny, I would say, is Kawhi. Easily. That's the easy that's one. That's an easy one. But who actually is, like, the funniest guy on the Why, team? bro? Yo, Kawhi, yo, the <laughs> shit he says. He actually the moments is he says funny. It is hilarious. So, say a coach or somebody's giving a serious talk or a serious spiel, and they mess up, and they say something that he won't agree with, he'll just... He'll yeah. just blurt out like nah that ain't and he'll just say <laughs> <laughs> like it's just funny shit like that. Or nah the, the funny the funny the funny like this shit was funny. When, when you airball in practice, right, you gotta stop play. So we could be practicing, scrimmaging, you airball the shot. No matter what, you got you gotta drop the ball, run down. Everybody and back. say we'll wait. Yeah, we'll say we'll uh, wait. So I do it, everybody uh, uh, abides by the law. Right? Nobody's ab- nobody's above the nobody's law. Nobody's above the law. That's B Shaw saying. You're not above the law. Go do it. Right? So I've done it. Like everybody's done it. Kawhi airballs. Right? Everybody's looking around. Like, and everybody's looking around like who's gonna tell them <laughs> we'll wait. <laughs> so now like I'm looking at B Shaw. B Shaw don't say nothing. So then finally B Shaw's like uh, Nah, everybody's on B Shaw's ass yeah, low yeah, key. Yeah, like, yo, B Shaw. We on B Shaw ass, like, B are you gonna yeah, you ain't gonna say nothing? <laughs> so finally, like, uh why like uh I'm not running. <laughs> Why you sound just like that, straight, yo, straight, like that. straight up, straight like that? I'm not running, and B Shaw like nobody's above the law. Like he like it's basketball. I'm a airball again. Like <laughs> I'm not. You not about to coach me or teach me that like airballing is like not good. It's part of the game. That's like hell. that's so. Funny. I'm not running, yo. And then like 20 minutes later, somebody else airball. And Wise like, see, now you <laughs> he's like, you got it. Everybody's head now. Now everybody airballing. Are <laughs> uh, you gonna have me nervous to shoot? Like, so he went above the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it was Aww. just, it was just funny because like the way it happened, and and that's just why he just a naturally like funny dude. Like, and he don't, he not, he not doing it out of disrespect. It's just like it's funny, like. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Please, Kawhi, come on our show. <laughs> we need him. So, so in terms of somebody that like surprisingly just naturally funny, it, it's easily why. So the last question I have, and we might have different answers here. I'm excited for this, but who's the best dressed Clipper? Well, right now it's Russ, but before he got there, it was me. I get you that. Yeah, I know. I, I got no, I got no problem with uh, that. Okay, I, okay. At yeah. this point in my life, I'm, I, I'm a dad. Hey. Wake up, put a little, you know, whatever little you touch see, to a little whatever comfy see, swag. Just, whatever yeah. I see, boom, I think this goes good with this, boom. I'm on my dad's shit at this point in my career. So, I, you know, I, I get out the way. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to say Russ. Russ and then, and then T-Man. 
I know you've been uh, spending time at the Clippers facility. We talked about this a little bit a couple of days ago when I saw you up there about, you know, what you add and what you, you know, working on in your game. Tell the fans out there, what exactly is T-Man adding to that bag? A little bit of everything because I feel like that's my game. So literally working on everything, ball handling, shooting. Uh, I've been working a lot on passing, mm -hmm. one hand, two hand, whatever, different pivots, like a lot of footwork stuff. Uh, but my main thing was coming into it was playing out of two, off two feet. Mm -hmm. Like I was watching a lot of Jimmy Butler um, and how he got to it. He's always comfortable getting in the paint, just playing off two. You know, he he, he has a comfortable midi off two. He'll pivot, step through, lay up. Mm -hmm. um, he'll shoot the fadeaway off two, but he's always getting to his spots and with pace and being comfortable and mm -hmm. not getting sped up. Um, Luca does it too. So I just like, I, you know, I kind of want to add that to my game. I'm a one foot player, but I really want to want to add that to your yeah. game. A lot of footwork stuff though. A little left hand work. Yeah. Add, yeah. add that left hand to the mix. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> It must be an inside thing y'all got at practice. Yeah, it's I'm there. Done. Yeah, T man, you know, it, it, it's he ain't working. He working on his left. He, he, he hard, it. hard right, hard right guy. <laughs> hard right. I use it when I need it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also had Demar on on uh, our show a couple couple weeks back, and you know you we I've been you know for how this. you feel about Debo. I've been waiting for this. He talked about how he knows your tendencies defensively, and so he he knows that he can get. You in foul trouble and give you trouble on the court. Outside looking in, I would say Demar is probably one of your toughest covers. Is uh, is he one of your toughest covers, or who else is up there on that list as your toughest covers? Um, Demar is probably my toughest cover. <laughs> I don't have nobody else that I have problems with. Yeah, um, not even P over here. <laughs> like, but um, I mean, yeah, like as a young player and a young defender. You want to make plays, mm -hmm. and he's gonna exploit that. Mm -hmm. And he knows you're in there. You're trying to make plays. So, my first couple of years, he's pump faking, ball faking. His footwork is getting me in positions where I'm I'm out of position. He knows I'm a bump him foul. So, if I would have played a whole game, I would foul out guarding him back then. But now, <laughs> now you think you got it? I, I know what I'm doing. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So this, this year, I I knew I knew what I was doing. Didn't jump for no pump fakes. He gonna try that pump fake bull. All year, next year, not yeah. happening. You're not going for it. I'm not going for that. Tell I'm you. excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am He's excited watching. for this. Okay. okay. I'm Debo excited for coming this. for you. T-Man, a better question is, I'm going to give you an opportunity. You know, Paul said that when you weren't here, but I, now that you guys are in the same room, I only think it's right that you get a little bit of, you know, a little get back. Mm -hmm. So watching Paul play, I want to know who you think. Who you think is my Who gives cover. Paul the problem? Mm. <laughs> well, when I first got here, it was Joe Ingles. <laughs> he don't like that shit. I'm so happy you said that. I'm so happy you said that. PG does not like the Joe Ingles talk. I don't. But um, that's who it was for the longest, I feel like. Yeah. I would say it gave me problems from a, like, a annoying standpoint. Like, he, he was just such an annoying player. And for me, it helps me. He don't know that, but it helped me. Like, people think, like, oh, I'm getting under his skin. Like, I'm going to make him off his game. Right. That actually locks me in. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I could be shooting bad or going through a, a rough patch. That locks me in to like, all right, now everything's about to be calculated. Like, I'm going to make sure I get a bucket on you. I mean, it showed in that <clears throat> that Utah series. Like, yeah. Like, you were locked in. Yeah. Like, every game he was locked in. I was locked in. Because then he taught, I don't know if he taught Royce O'Neal some of this bullshit, but then Royce, <laughs> Roy, Royce, Royce was the doing whole the team's doing it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, now you, yeah, like, come, yeah, yeah. come on, bro. It was, cor like, it was corny stuff it was going just on like It that was corny, sure. bro. It was just corny shit going on in that series that I was like, all right, I'm locked in. Let's go. We're, we're even now, okay? No more. Like, that's it. From here on out. Well, you're not talking about each other on other podcasts. <laughs> I just wanted to settle this right here, right now. So I want to talk a little bit about what it's like being in practice, being able to guard P and Kawhi. How much has that helped you on the defensive end going up against those guys? I mean, it's helped me big time with, with, with discipline purposes, I feel like. Because, you know, with P, you never know what's, what's about to happen. You can't, you can't jump to conclusions or else you'll end up on the floor. You know what I'm saying? You'll end up looking crazy so uh you know i'm not about to go tell you tell y'all how i guard this man <laughs> you, he, 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 he take notes boy. yeah i know he yeah, does boy, i know he, he does he'll he be like yo remember when you said he'll yeah, do something sure. that's be like, for sure day. so anyways but Kawhi, Kawhi is tough to guard too because he's getting his spots no matter what 
and he don't care if you're there or not. So that's that's that, that was tough for me as a young player. Like he don't see me there. Like I'm trying to contest hard as shit. Yeah, he's not pump faking. He's getting there and he's shooting. He's getting it. to it and he's exploding up. And he do it from like sometimes he do it from like an uninterested like like he'll ball fake and then just put it on the ground one time and pull up cash. Like what was one of the craziest things you seen? Why do I don't know who we were playing, but he stripped somebody. Oh, that you know was what I'm yeah, about? yeah, 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 yeah. He spun Donovan all, Mitchell. Somebody tried to spin, and he and he just yeah, uh, yeah. That was crazy. That, that, that was probably crazy. like the one of the most. I want to say like, that was Donovan Mitchell. That yeah, I never like seen that. somebody do that type yeah. of shit. But there's a lot of moments like that. I remember he rebounded one hand while in the air, ball faked, came down with it. And like I don't I don't know if he shot it or he just dribbled it up. Like it was a it, it was it was a transition. We're going down, so we're in fast break. He rebound one hand, fake pass while he's in the air with that one hand, and then just came down and started dribbling. And I was very, like, very God. casual though. Ca- very casually, he do that type shit on purpose. On purpose, yeah. Cause why different? <clears throat> you've been confusing me lately, T man. <laughs> you've been you've been confusing me. You know why you've been the confusing transitions, me? transitions, man. You know why you've been confusing why, me? Why, why? You've been in the league five years. And on paper, what you listed as? What position did you play? I don't what know. What the kids know you as? Small forward, right? Yeah. See, this is where you're confusing me at. <laughs> Last season, about 20 plus games, they got you playing point guard. Mm-hmm. Now what? What, I'm going to call you a ball handler now? Since you're doing that, I, 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 now, how how was it shifting to, to, to being a, a main ball handler? And do you want to continue doing that in the upcoming season. It, it wasn't too much of a crazy shift for me because I did it my whole rookie year and I got a lot of reps at point guard in the G League and um, in the bubble even, like just playing, po- I played point that whole year. So I got a lot of reps. So it wasn't, it didn't, I wasn't uncomfortable with it. And I think these guys make it easy. You know what I'm saying? I just got to get it over half and get in the rock and let them work out. So um, they don't make it, you know, they make it easy for me. So you so you want to do more point guard? Yeah, I'll do whatever. I'm. I'm one do through. It all. I'm one through five. I was playing a five, four, three. I don't care. I, do as long all. as I'm out there, I'm happy. So, with every guest we have on the show, we do an edition of a starting five. But this time, we're presented by Klarna, the new smart way to pay when you shop online for tickets and merch from your favorite teams and more. But last season, T Man, you finished top three in rim finishers at seventy two percent. So only Steph. Uh, and D Fox were ahead of you. So for this starting five, I'm going to have you and P go back and f- forth and pick all time best finishers in traffic, starting with the point guard, and you get to go first. All time best finisher in traffic. I'm probably going to have to go with Kyrie Irving. Mm, that is a great pick. That's who I was going to go with. I'm going to go with Russ. Talk about athleticism and, and, and powering and finesse. I'm going to go Russ. Russ had got all of that. Finishing, dunk on you, layup. Okay, who do you got at the two? Two, there's so many all time. Might as well get them two out the way. If he go there, I'm going there. Might as well get them two out the way. You go first. Let me see who you go. Uh, with. I got to go. I got to go MJ. Yeah, yeah, I got to go yeah, MJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who you going? I got to go MJ. That's a, that's, you that's a no another, brainer, though. You got to pick somebody yeah, else. You can't take you my can't pick. Have you can't guys take on the same team. So we know who you pick it. Ha, you made me go first. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's tough. I'm gonna have a big lineup. I might have to go T Mac. Ooh, Ooh, okay. That was shot. That was wow. Okay, T Mac was a good one. That was a good one. He was my three, but that was your three. Yeah, he back on me. No, I think it's back on him. So it's back you, on you. you I give you. I give, there, you so. I give you your three now. I give you your small four. At the three, I'm gonna go Y. The Y is finishing is crazy. Like his finishing is crazy, and he do both hands. I was I, I was gonna pick I was gonna pick Vince Carter. I was gonna pick Vince Carter. But I can go me too, you know. Okay. <laughs> there he goes. Okay, at the four. I'm going to have to go Tim Duncan. That's an easy one, no? Uh, I mean, depends on who he I, say. I'm going to say it's say. a little iffy. It's like little the iffy. bank shot really isn't like. Finisher in traffic? I mean? But what you mean? That's in traffic. Like he's he's down there in the paint working out finishing. Okay, I get you that. That's I'm going to go Sean Kemp. That was a good finisher. Crazy <laughs> finisher in traffic. We need to start bringing that shit back in the NBA, like the they, cabbage passion well, shit. Let, you why don't they let us celebrate? You know what I'm saying? Like we gotta just start doing it. Ah, uh, you pay my fines then. If you do some wild hey, y'all shit, hear this right? I will pay it's that so fine. Tight. You gritty yourself shit after dunking? <laughs> nah, that's corny. I'm, I'm not gritty. Doing it with you. I'm doing He's it. You heard it here first. Bro said he got your, he got your back. At the five, at the five is easy, Shaq. 
it's a it's an easy one. I'm, I'm gonna go like Wilt. Cause Wilt was just bigger than everybody, and no through traffic, traffic, yeah, I'm, no he traffic. shot like eighty percent. There's no easy. traffic around. Right. I think I got T Man on that one. I think I beat him. I think you could have picked some a better center. You don't like Wilt? He's too tall. I think you just need another center. He too pick? tall. Shaq taller than him. Who would have Jackie picked for his five? Point guard, I'm going AI. Okay. Two guard, I'm going Kobe. Okay. Three guard, I'm going. I'm gonna go Paul Pierce. Uh, <laughs> four, four, four. Who's your four? Four. Four, four is a tough one. Four. Okay. I'm gonna go Larry Johnson. Really? <laughs> Larry Johnson back in the day. He was a finisher to me. Okay, grandmama. In my five, I want to say uh, Robinson. David, uh, David Robinson. Robinson. That's not a bad I one. I want to say David Robinson. My list was nice. It was it was solid. The, your three, Paul Pierce is, is a legend. But uh. Paul Pierce left a game and came back and whooped ass and won a championship. He finished that. Shout out T-Man for a hell of a... Uh, episode. We appreciate you coming through. We got another special guest coming in a little bit as well from Clipper Nation. T Man, appreciate you, bro. Thanks bro. for having me. And shout out to your Raja Rondo card too. Come on now, proving me wrong. Come on now. Appreciate you, gang. Uh, I, yes, sir. Appreciate you, Jackie. You're a big sports fan. How crazy do you get for your fandom? Do you ever paint your face before a game? Well, you know, I'm wild at the games, people. I don't know if I'm doing all that painting my face and all that stuff, but I do be screaming and hollering. I be doing my thing at the game. Yeah, I've seen you get a little crazy at the Clipper games, but honestly, you get way too crazy when you're sitting courtside. But I always know that you're going to be wearing a dope jersey. Look, man, I love all my jersey. Okay, my basketball jersey, my football jersey, my soccer jersey, it don't matter. Look, I might at this point have to just have to stop and start getting more jerseys at this point, okay? Well, if you like jerseys like my guy right here have you heard about Klarna it's the new smart way to pay when you shop online for tickets and merch from your favorite teams and more now when you make a purchase at any of your favorite stores either online or in store you can spread the cost into four smaller payments without interest or fees just look for the pink Klarna badge at checkout or download the Klarna app to shop and spread the cost today Klarna shop Smarter, ball harder. California resident loans made or arranged are pursuant to a California financing law license. And now joining us for the second half of our Clippers special episode, we got not only one guest, but we got two. A very special episode. We got a father-son duo. I'm going to call them OG Kmart. And we got the YG Kmart. <laughs> Appreciate y'all joining the show. Thanks for coming on the show, yes, guys. Sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So wait, since since we doing the show in the barbershop, it's only right I ask him the first question then, right? What's the question? Woo! We know y'all getting paper now. We know that. And you've been getting old paper and new paper. But <laughs> we wanna I wanna know what's the most ex, the, the most expensive that you pay for uh for a haircut. Maybe two hundred dollars. Somebody came to the house. Two hundred dollars. I've heard prices. These new prices. Oh, these dudes taking advantage of y'all for mediocre haircuts. Three hundred. No, no, he's two. Two hundred. Okay, the newest might might be three hundred, but I'm also two hundred. My was my. So you still threshold. paying two hundred right now? If, if I had somebody come to the house, yeah, I give him two hundred. That's what I told him, and he thought I, I was crazy for giving him two hundred dollars. No, it's a house call. I'm saying it's convenience. Gas only costs fifty dollars. But it's convenience fee for that. You know what I'm saying? That's him taking time out of his schedule. To come drive, it's LA. It's what it's he traffic. do for a living? It's LA because he could have got three cuts in that time, right? <laughs> Give me your answer. I won't talk to your daddy no more. I won't talk to your daddy no more. Give me your answer. Two hundred, two fifty max. That's a good. Two fifty. Yeah, right yeah, there. Any, anything more? I'm you only getting your sides cut. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and after that, if they say more than two fifty, I'll wait till I can go to the shop. You can see that's yourself. See, that's why you establish price before the dude gets started. You know what I'm saying? Cause you sit down and you cut your hair. Now he tell you five hundred. Now you now you gonna be in a boxing. So you still two hundred. <laughs> you boxing. still two hundred and you still and you two fifty. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to meet y'all, Barb. I'm oh, cool with Davy. <laughs> <laughs> well, now y'all in the space, OG. This is my barber shop. Whenever y'all need to cut us on the house, All my right. word. All you right. come to Vegas, y'all, 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 y'all in good hands. I'm will pull tell up. us that, Dallas. So, <laughs> pull up. So Dallas don't need it. Oh, I think they, they, wait, you guys do baldies here. We do baldies. You do baldies, so all the baldies in Vegas, you can come through, you know, get okay, right. Can I ask y'all this question real fast? Yeah. If you was bald-headed, huh? would y'all pay 200 just for that gold tee? No. 
I, I like that. No, but you might want it for the that's shade, like, that's maybe. Like, that's, like, like, that's that's like seventy. But I'm saying you can ball, you can cut your hair yourself and then get this lined up. So what y'all? Yeah, you just can't trust anybody with this, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta go fact. to the right person. All right, I'm facts. gonna leave this alone. That's a fact. Kenyon, so have you ever given your son a haircut? And was there any bad experiences with that? Nah, man. I I learned I had a bad one as a kid. My mom butchered me as a child. <laughs> okay. Listen, man, I had a part. She like like. <laughs> this like Ooh. bad one I was like and I had a school picture she cut my hair for a school picture so it's, so it's a picture out so there so it's documented it's documented it's that's tough my mom cut my hair for this picture so find the picture no, I wouldn't, yeah, oh no it's, it's only one of them uh, we all probably could share that moment where moms thought that they could cut you up you had the, you in the crib with moms too long man pops gave me a couple cuts but it was mostly moms that you know I was around moms when pops was at work you know I had to get a cut before school moms would come in there and try to do what she do but I, I I got some nasty ones floating Ooh, around there too, and you yeah, can nah. tell I'm mad in my yeah. picture. Yeah, listen, yeah. you know, no yeah, smile. Because I was getting nice cuts man. then, so he was going to the same barbers I was going to. You know what I'm uh, saying? As a kid, there you go. You know what I'm so you had the fresh. You been had a fresh yeah. for a long time. Going to school clean for sure. <laughs> Two fifty for a haircut now though. That's crazy. You go to the shop. It's like seventy seventy five. Oh, they charging eighty hundred dollars in the shop now. I'm not doing it. I'm old school and haircuts was seven dollars. That's how much cut, a, a cut used Back to be? Seven days. bucks? Seven dollars, no. And it give was an official ten, one? Give them ten dollars. They razor all everything? Even, all even. This is before the razor. Oh, okay. This is okay. okay. what I'm saying? So it wasn't no tapers and shit there. No, no, no. Nothing no, like this. <laughs> all even, seven dollars. <laughs> give them ten. Here you go, three dollar tip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you had it to give. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. We'll get to you joining the Clippers. Um, but you are in a basketball family. Yeah. OG played. Um... So you've seen his growth as a little one. Um, when did you notice it was a possibility for, you know, Junior to be in the league? To be in the league, like when he was in high school, but knew he had something special, like when he was young. Mm -hmm. Like he used to just fly around, man, dunking and me telling him not to run around the pool, mm -hmm. swimming pool, he running, had a goal in the pool, he taking off. Yeah. He just had that athleticism. Yeah, we, all my partners sitting around. I'm like, yo, man, like, look at him, man. They like, well, I'm like, man, don't they look like Josh Smith jumping through here, man? <laughs> like, I just tell them, hey, young man, yeah. like, don't they look like Josh Smith? He taking off that left hand. How you doing that? Same yeah. thing. Yeah. I'm like, man, he be out on the court, man. We, I used to come from the club two, three, four in the morning. Him and my nephews on the court outside hooping. Hooping. You know what I'm saying? They that's blow crazy. the goals and they tan it down. Punching you shit. know what I'm saying? So that's <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like he been and then the older he got, man, I just I just saw it. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of me in him, how he approached it, what he was about, mm -hmm. how aggressive he was, how he was about winning and losing. Mm -hmm. And I was just telling him for a long time, man, like internally, like, you got what it takes. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is keep getting better. Right. Just put and everything else together. Yeah, right. man. He just, opportunities was coming to school and all that and just decisions that was made, man. He just, he always wanted it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. used to tell people, like, it was, it, it, there was nothing else. Mm -hmm. Like, you ask some people, it was a plan B. Right. That's it all he no, wanted to it do. It was A, B, C, whatever. It right. was who. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it was. So, he locked in, man. I just... I used to tell him in high school, like, boy, you listen, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, I'm loud and run right. when it come to it, man. So I used to be at them games, man, talking my shit like this. Yeah. And, yeah, do you hear him? Yeah. Like, I, man, people and it's, like, it's special, too, because with his athleticism, you do not see that at the high school level, dog. Like, I used to watch some of the highlights. And you damn near looking in the rim, like, facts, in high school. Facts. I was like, golly, yeah. like, for you to see that. And and that's how you yeah. played the game, looking in the, the basket. Floor. Yeah, yeah you know, and watching it. <laughs> and I used to be in that joint in awe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, yeah. like, man. Like, so, uh, so, so the question started coming. Should the KJ jump higher than you? Should the KJ jump higher than you? I said, start questioning. Like, he might. <laughs> yeah, like in my day, like, I used to get off that float. Yeah. But no, nah, he was man, doing something. They played in Hawaii. They played this 7-4 kid. He had no idea what he was in store for. Mm -hmm. KJ dunked him before dude think about yeah. jumping. <laughs> On think, his head every time. I think that's probably the most I'm impressive. Like, reversing that thing before he, I'm like, yeah. yo, man. I think that's probably the most impressive thing is how quick you can get off the floor. One foot and two foot. Like, it's like a trampoline. I wish I wish I had that in my game, dog. Arrogant in high school, like, he's like, man, I should stay to put this right leg in the museum. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're like, really? That's the way you feel, right? <laughs> like, need to put this right already. So I'm saying, uh, he got need to go into Smithsonian. He already, got different like, ligaments and tendons. 
Yeah, yeah, everything different over there. You were at the uh, the UCLA summer run. I think P was there yeah, too when you yeah. caught that 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 one mm, dog. I think it just yeah. it's been picking up a little bit For now sure. of everything that's been yeah. going on with you. But that was yeah, he no, was up there. Yeah, no, all day he was blocking everybody, and I mm-hmm. I told him I was like, don't try that with me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm letting you know now. That one or the one at Shamanai? No, the one at UCLA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The but one no, at UCLA. That one was a sophomore in high school though. Just just sophomore so, year. Just when did, when did you start dunking? I think it was like eighth grade. I think eighth grade. Yeah, because we had Demar on here. Demar said he was dunking and. He was getting in fights at school because he was dunking on kids in the sixth grade. And I'm like, bro, I ain't never had that problem. Like, like eighth grade, like really comfortable, like where I could jump and yeah. really just go three times in a row, don't miss it, eighth grade. Eighth grade. Yeah. Me too. The end of my ninth grade. Hey, you too? Same. Yeah. I was punching on people my ninth grade year. <laughs> Me too. The one that sophomore year at Shaman, though. Yeah. Like punching? No, the one at UCLA, though, it was just like the whole gym just got like quiet. Like, yeah. It seemed like everyone was scared. Because of the strength of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. The setup of it, though, was crazy just because he was blocking. Dude mm. was challenging like everybody, everybody, blocking him. Like, yes. It was some shit that I was like, oh, yeah, he getting dunked yeah. on. Oh, he's snatching it. Yeah. And then so when he did it, it was like, God. <laughs> you forgot all about them other blocks. I didn't think I was going to make it, though. Like, he threw it up. I was like, oh, I don't know. He might throw this to And I kept going up. And then after, I called him. I'm like, the, the day you did come, you know what I'm saying? I really punched somebody. Right. So. That is one thing I learned, not to jump with your ass, dog. So, KJ, what's the best piece of advice that your dad's given you early in your career so far? Just being a professional. Um is coming in, uh, just being ready to play. Like you, obviously, we have 82 games in the season. Just coming in, being ready to play, um, playing on both ends of the floor, and just being a good dude in the locker room. Whether it's uh, teammates, trainers, uh, coaches. Um, when we go on the road, obviously they got ball boys in there. You know what I'm saying? Being good dudes to them because they go a long way. So those are probably the biggest things he gave me advice for. LeBron admitted that he had some regret naming his son LeBron. And so I want to know in your shoes, growing up with your dad being the number one pick, having the name, same name, him being an all-star, what was that like growing up with that kind of pressure? I mean, when I was young, young, obviously I felt a little pressure. But once I kind of, probably like high school, I mean, I kind of felt like it was an advantage. You know what I'm saying? Like he'd been through it. He was the number one pick. He'd been an all-star, played in the finals, playoffs. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of took that as an advantage and used it to pick his head, you know what I'm saying, about the game. I mean, to this day. Um, after games, we talk, you know what I'm saying, stuff I could do better, um, stuff he's seen on the game, and I ask him. So, no, I feel like it's an advantage, you know what I'm saying? A lot of guys don't have dads who played in the NBA, so I, I use it to the best I can. You know, as a Clippers, we're excited to have yeah, you here, bro. Sure. You know, it's going to be some exciting times. Yeah. They're going to love you. Clipper Nation is a hell of a, hell of a fan base. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're going to have we're going to have shit rocking there for sure. Outside of playing back home in L.A., what what else are you most excited about? I mean, specifically playing with you, Russ and Kawhi. I mean, um, obviously, you guys are going to be Hall of Famers. My past three years with the Rockets, you know, what I'm saying kind of been down. We never made the playoffs or whatever. So that's what I'm excited for. I mean, obviously, y'all make the playoffs and everything. Um, try to win a championship, but really getting in the playoffs and getting that bump. Like I'm super excited to be in that situation, playing against the best teams. Um, obviously, you guys, like I said, you guys are gonna be Hall of Famers, picking y'all heads apart. Um, I'm always, you know, what I'm saying willing to learn. I have him, but. Uh, just having teammates who've been, you know what I'm saying, been in hard situations, you know what I'm saying, up and down situations, just being able to go and ask some questions and stuff like that, uh, I'm super excited for. And we're going to, you know, you know how we come yeah, in. We're going to share sure. whatever inf- information we got. For sure. You know, you got the the real OG here that's yeah. going to really kick game for yeah. you. But whatever you need from us, for man, sure. you know, we there Appreciate for you. you. We riding with you. Appreciate we looking it. forward to having that. That lob threat, that yeah, vertical for, threat now, for sure. you know what I mean? Yeah. And we talked about this yeah. when we was working out, yeah. you know, in the same gym. Is yeah. Just think about the breaks, man. Exactly. Us in transition, us getting yeah, stops, us sure. playing faster. We're looking forward to having yeah. you pairing up with T-Man. Yeah. And now we got young, you know, bulls out yeah, there. For you sure. and Bones. Yeah. Like, y'all, we, we got a young nucleus around exactly. our, our vets now where we exactly. can have some youth and we can have some energy. Exactly. Because they relying on us. Yep. And, and we like, damn, like, we 33, yeah. we 34. Like, yeah. 
we 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 we, we, nah. we not young no more. For sure, no, like, <laughs> we need them. We need them. Like, we yeah, need some sure, youth around for here. For sure, like I know, I understand. Like y'all the head of the snake, but you know what I'm saying. We going we gonna have y'all backs for sure. Just getting that, you know what I'm saying. Extra burst of energy. You know what I'm saying. At times where it might be, you know what I'm saying, leveled out. So, no, I'm excited for sure. I want to ask you a question, pops. OG, are you excited that your son is playing for the Clippers? Oh, absolutely, man. Um, I've made LA home for the last few, last eight years now. Um, so yeah, man, I get to see him. I ain't got to pay for plane plane tickets to <laughs> save some money in that regard. <laughs> no, man, I just um, he's a he's a winner in his heart, man, and he despises losing. So for him to be able to play on a team that's fighting for something. Yep. You know I'm saying these dudes fighting for legacy. They fighting for championship. Yep. So they play different. Yep. So and that's the way he approaches the game night in, night out. And the guys that he play against know that. Right. So for him to be able to be in that environment, man, and be with an organization that want him, that appreciate him, man, I'm, hey, I'm, ec- I'm ecstatic, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm ecstatic. OG, we know you overcame some injuries early in your career. Um, and now KJ here is on to season four. He's, you know, figuring out his game, you know, his his uh, his journey of who he is as a player. Um, as a pops, are you like, hey, son, I think you need to be better at this or I think you need to work on that. How much of the development part do you take part in in, in, in his growth? Or is it just, hey, you know what you got to do. I'm going to let you do this your career. Or like how much of that development you got? Uh, it's some of both. Uh, I go to the gym, watch him work out when, early on. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I was real instrumental in just daily, mm-hmm. daily instruction. But I started backing off the older he got. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now he was a pro. I don't go as much. But like I said, after games, I'm always. Mm-hmm. I'm saying always because um, I watch every game. Mm-hmm. Whether I record it or it's live, I watch every single game. Mm-hmm. So I'm always giving them little tidbits and certain things, man. And um, But now the thing is, you just got to get two numbers up. Like, in my opinion, mm-hmm. it's three-point percentage and field goal percentage. It does everything else. Right. You know what I'm saying? In my right. opinion. Right. So, just getting those two things, I mean, he's going to be shooting the ball better. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, right. And that's just all it is, in my opinion, that right. he needs to mm-hmm. do. You know what I'm saying? Because he, he got the board covered as how he plays, how mm-hmm. he approach it. He's getting better on the ball defensively. Mm-hmm. Having y'all there, having to go against y'all, playing ones and all that. Every, going to even get better. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So... Nah, man, I just watch, man, and I just – just little things during the course of the game, the course of every few games, you know what I'm saying? I used to tell him stuff, and he used to do it, and then sometimes in high school he'd be like – I'd be like, yo, and he just raised his hand. That's all I had to say was yo. Yeah, and he knew what that was. He knew what it was. Yeah. So now he go down the court and he tell him, he talking to himself because he already had right. to process it. You know what I'm saying? So, nah, man, I'm, I'm constantly teaching. Mm-hmm. I'm a real hooper. I'm a, I'm a like – I'm a real hooper, dog. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nah, so I'm, we know always, shit. I'm always tuned in, man. So I'm always giving knowledge. Um, try not to be overbearing. You know what I'm saying? Because I know it's his career. Mm-hmm. And I try to let him gauge it and all that. And then just, you know what I'm saying? Dude, just picking my spots. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just picking my spots. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because he's done a great job at being a pro and growing in his role as a pro. Mm-hmm. So giving him that and just, hey, I'm happy, man. Yeah. I'm Love happy. It. You still get that, uh, when pops give you that look, you, you still it's still there for sure, <laughs> for sure. No, I know. Like like he said, this is a lot of stuff he instilled in me. You know what I'm saying? Young, like in a game, like just little stuff where I'd be like, oh no, like that's my fault. Mm-hmm. He can't even be at the game, but it just come to my mind. You, like, oh, know. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So no, he helped a lot. Like he let me figure it out, but at the same time, I always ask him. You know what I'm saying? Questions, and stuff like that. Like he played 15 years, so. Just having that, having that knowledge at home. Plus, you know what I'm saying. Now I'm in a new situation with you guys. You mm-hmm. guys been in the league for a while, been in the playoffs, um, stuff like that. And having you guys on my team, so no, I think it's gonna help a lot for sure. Yeah, I got a mad, mad scientist in the front office. I don't know if y'all know that or not. Hell, Frank, mad scientist, dog. Mad Unbelievable. scientist, dog. We used to come in that joint for shoot around practice. L ain't been to sleep, man. Eyes bloodshot red. He got pen and marker because he been gnawing on the marker. Don't know it's all over his mouth. <laughs> like what? You, so when his wife in her paper, like yo, when did you have time to make kids, man? You never at home. Like, Hell is a mad, hard worker, man. Mad <laughs> scientist, dog. Listen, great basketball mind, man. Yeah. So yeah, we in great hands. With Absolutely. That. Talk about Lawrence Frank, our uh, our GM of the team. Uh, 
and, and, and L is unbelievable. Like literally, I try to get him. And I try to beat L to the gym. Sometimes I get there early. L's car is parked right there, and his office working. He'll come down. He get on his treadmill, still working. Like L is is one of the is probably one of the hardest working. GMs in the league. Shout out L. KJ, so I want you to keep it real. And I actually kind of, I used to go to a few of those Sierra Canyon games back in the day. But, you know, I know he's sitting, I know he's sitting right next to you. But I want to know, like, have you ever been, like, playing the game and looked up and been like, man, Pops, you're doing too much? Mm, no, I'm not doing too much. But I know for sure he had to cuss a couple people out sometimes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, I don't think it was too much. I think it was, I mean, he's not going to cuss nobody out for no reason. I like, probably was warranted. But, no, nah, sometimes I see him, you know what I'm saying, talking to people or whatever. Maybe they be talking crazy. I think it's funny, personally. So. <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Uh, speaking of all this Clipper stuff going on, you act like you ain't never played for the Clippers, Pops. Oh, come on, you man. You played 2012 for the Clippers, man. Absolutely. I want to know what memories stand out to you the most, good and bad. Um, Oh, bad? Good or bad, No, no, it's good and bad. Bad is, well... Y'all gonna people gonna be mad at me. Don't please don't hate me for this. Like I went, I went because Chauncey was on the team at the time. Uh-huh. That's when I just came from China. Three months I was over there with the lockout, all that. I came from, and Chauncey was like, "We got a chance." This, that, and the third come, and Big Shot get hurt. Like my first game, I'm about to suit up Chauncey ripped towards Achilles, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. distraught. Right? I could have went to Miami and had a championship that year. Oh, <laughs> yeah. but, man. But, <laughs> KJ them was raised in L.A., so it was a family thing. Get to see them, all that. What's great, making the second round in the playoffs and beating Memphis and all that. And I'm saying, like, nah, we – seven games, us, me, Reggie, Mo, Mo Williams, Swaggy P. Swaggy P. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, 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 man, we, like, we – like game seven, like we let them dogs out. We was talking about it a minute ago, man. Me and Jim Rowe were talking about it earlier. Like, no disrespect to Blake and DeAndre, but they was puppies at the time. Right. And right. you can't bring no no puppies to no dog fight. Right. And the Memphis at that time, they I'm saying Zach and them guys, them, them dogs. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So you need dogs. Yeah, me and Reggie took turns. Yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, ate their ass up too, boy. <laughs> took, took, took turns, man. <laughs> like, who you want this possession? Okay, I'm going to guard Zebo. You guard Gasol. Okay, who you want this possession? I'm going to guard him. Yeah. And we was taking turns, man. <laughs> and then yeah, they running pick and rolls at the end of the game. Rudy Gay, all that. And uh, shutting that shit right down. Yeah. Going for none of it. I got to ask, OG, who, who, because. You played the game as, with such a, a, a powerful and and just passion. Like who who is your inspiration as a player? Man, I'm, I'm well. It was a team, man. I grew up a Pistons fan. Okay, like I'm a Bad Boys Detroit Pistons fan. Mm-hmm. I was you from you from Michigan. I was born in Saginaw, Michigan. I was raised in Dallas, but I was born in Saginaw, Michigan. So, like my mom, um, so my grandmother used to send me like all the Pistons gear as a kid. Mm-hmm. Hats, T-shirts, like everything was Pistons. I'm saying okay. I don't, everybody walking around Mike this, Mike that. Mike right. was great, but I right. was a Pistons you want fan. The cast you know that's what I'm going saying? Yeah, Mike. you know yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> so that was my thing, and that just and then the environment, how, like how I grew up playing and all that. That's how they were. So it just gravitated towards that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But as far as a like a single basketball player, I was a Sean Kemp guy. Mm-hmm. Like, I see hey, it. I was I see that like I was a Sean Kemp head man, and I you everything I saw him doing, when I was in high school. I was trying to implement it. Yeah, like yeah, all of them going to work, watching the dunk contest. I'm trying to put people on posters and point yeah. at them. <laughs> I'm trying to do it all. You know what I'm saying? And just so lucky, our colors in high school were green and black. And he had to rebox the kamikazes. Listen, I did everything to the nail to get a pair of them things, yeah, man. Yeah. I, mean, I got a pair of them. You can tell me I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't him. Like, I was writing on basketballs. My mom still got them to this day. Like I run baby camp on them and yeah. all kinds of stuff. My mom still got them to this day. At what point did you know that, like, you had that explosiveness, that that, that athleticism? Because that's a that's a tough person to like. That's like somebody like five eight, five nine. And Giannis is like their influence. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, ah, uh, you don't really got that. Yeah. But for you to have that athleticism, like, when was it like, ah, that's 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 the guy? I grew up playing bitty basketball, and it was when they used to, like, if you were a certain age, 
Like they lowered the goals for you. Mm. So I've been dunking, dunking for a long <laughs> time, right? I mean, a really long time, man. So I've been practicing throwing that thing on down on people for a while. For a long time, okay. And then he came along, man, and then being me being from Dallas, seeing LJ in high school, all that stuff, him and, but Sean Kemp just was doing it different. And I saw myself like, I can get off the floor like that. I, and I just started trying the dunks. Mm-hmm. Like, I see him do something, I try it. What I've tried, like so now, nah, but then I just was able to go to school, man, and put some strength behind and get stronger. You were you you used to be one of my favorite dunkers, just the fi- the flare after the finish, that that ha, ah, and the net just flush like that. That slapping power the glass. is crazy. I'm saying, I think uh, I think you got a text of slapping the glass. You get a text some like slapping the glass or something. For sure, no, I think you got to be one of the first to to, to do that. Yeah, that was, to do what? Hang on the rim, slap, slap the back, slap the glass hard as shit. Dunk that thing and blah. Is you still dunking? Huh? Is you still out there dunking? You want to get under there and try me? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna do it today, but I got my sciatic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I can still dunk, man. Yeah, no, I can still dunk. Like, yeah, with ease, actually. I'll jump higher than him, though, so it's good. You better. Yeah. You young as hell. <laughs> oh, shit. I lock him down, though. He be fouling. He be playing old school rules. I love it. Yeah, yeah. 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 all day. He be fouling. He be fouling. He think he ain't part of all us fouling. Do y'all still play one right on one? No, I don't mess. He be fouling. He be fouling. So I see his little brother on him. He be locking him down. Yeah. You play old school rules, you know, it's a little more physical, yeah. you hand check, stuff like yeah. that. But nowadays, yeah, I'm chucking him on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, that's foul. You gonna go where I want you to go. Yeah, right? no, it's no. Yeah, but that's funny, because that's your era. Yeah. Yeah. That's different for you. Different now. So it's just a different era that he, he ain't doing nothing wrong. He playing his era of basketball. I think, I think that it's too soft. <laughs> like, I think it's too much nowadays. Like, you really can't, like, if a guy beats you and, like, you really, like, you're dead. Like, right. you can't even, like, you know what I'm saying, this, right. you know, arm bar, really. So, I mean, I feel like it's kind of soft. But back then, that was too much. Like, I don't So, let me ask y'all this. So, how, so when I play in the post, is it the same? Can you do the same in the post? You or can do still that, like, bent and then, then. Oh, yeah. I would yeah. control. Oh, yeah. That's all. It'll be over. It'll be over. <laughs> oh, it'll be over. Because what was, what's, what was. Oh, still here. No, it's the same. It was still the same. same. Oh, yeah. I was okay. over. Oh, it's over for guys. Yeah, you, you, you're not moving, you. No, and I just, so I, techniques I didn't gave him that he used. I, certain things that I put my hand in certain places and I, you twitch, I, I feel certain yeah. things and I know when you're getting ready to turn. I'm trying to get him to use his hands more. Yeah. So I used to anticipate the turn because I know which way you about to go because I got my hand in a certain place and you're... You, and I know as soon as you about to field. go, as yeah. soon as you get ready to go, I'm, nah. Yeah. Uh, ball, oh, every time. <laughs> every time. It's natural. And if I don't get it here, I might get right. it there. upstairs. Oh, yeah. I'm swiping and going. <laughs> yeah. No, swiping and swinging twice. <laughs> you like, yo, that, man, so what's wrong with you? Did you just try to block his shot twice? <laughs> like, yeah, I want it. Just missed it here. Yeah, missing it. here, here, here. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, all here. I, man, yeah. It's a swipe, right? I can go get it up top. Yeah, you go get it upstairs. Yeah, and I'm trying to get the timing right to you know what I'm saying as soon as they put the ball I did it a couple times yeah but I'm trying to get the timing right for, gotta, for sure I gotta ask though because that is interesting that you brought up the whole uh the NBA being soft mm-hmm. and you you know you watching the game now completely different from Absolutely. when you played like what what's your take on where the NBA is now opposed to where where when you played I love the skill set of it I love the evolution of the skill set of the game because mm-hmm. you need to get there. Mm-hmm. It excluded certain guys that we felt in my era that only got drafted because they were tall or they, you know what I'm saying? Or they had the toughness they, had toughness. Yeah. Yeah, they couldn't actually play basketball. Right. Right. A lot of guys benefited from that. But, yeah, it's tough to watch at night, man, some nights because there's no resistance. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm used to, like, it meaning every possession meaning something, whether it's playoffs or not. Mm-hmm. And it's just this free-flowing, everybody just going, and like. You can't hard you foul. Can't, you can't, mm-hmm. it, ain't, it ain't about the hard fouls, man. Like, how many guys average 30 this year? Like, six, seven. A lot. Like, that, that's unheard of, man. And even high 20s. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and, and after that. You, you, got, guys, you got, got two or three guys got, on the like, team that yeah, might be yeah, averaging 20. And that's, no, that's crazy mm-hmm. to me. Yeah, y'all can score. Mm-hmm. Everybody ain't that damn good, right, man. Right, right. No, that's so that's my, it's just my thing, man. I just, I get it. Like, I get it, the shooting and all that. It, it is what it is. You guys have worked y'all ass off to have that skill set and be able to shoot the percentages and all. I get that. But it, it just takes away from the essence of mm-hmm. it all for, for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I agree with it 100%. Because even 
when I first came into the league, like you could you could be a little bit more physical. And the big thing was pick and rolls, right? Like I feel like my era, 2010, pick and rolls was was starting to be like the focus on offense. It wasn't it wasn't, you know, so much as throwing it on the block, playing off the big. It was pick and roll focused. And you used to be able to like climb into the ball handler. You can be physical on on the ball. You know what I mean? Now, some of the stuff you put a hand on him, dude flopping. Or you get your hand in there, he hooking it. Like it's 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 just a different game and you can't really approach it and play it the same way. Um so it, it in ways we benefit from, you know, the game from uh, you know, it, it's it's more entertaining. Higher scores, uh bigger productions out of players. But in the grand scheme of it, I think it's more entertaining when defense is implemented and, and, and you got guys that can actually guard and you get to see that on display. The offensive guy struggling or, you know, being in a tough spot. So I think it kind of go hand in hand. I, I wish the league yeah. would, would err on the side of letting guys play a little yeah, bit like more physical. Yeah, like these scoring outbursts, right? No, the game they had, this is the yeah. craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, like this is y'all, went, y'all, y'all score like, no, you versus Sack. Y'all score like 170 to Sack, triple Sack, overtime yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that. That's just crazy. Like, <laughs> there is no way they scored that much points in a basketball yeah. game. And But just the, like the gaps of like, okay, we'll score 100. Maybe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then you had Mike's, Dave Robinson scored 71, 72, well, whatever scored 71 against us this but, season. So it's too so. But, so, so, so the point I'm getting to is like, there were gaps in time for these scoring outbursts. Mm-hmm. Then Kobe came and scored 81. It's like, yo, mm-hmm. ain't nobody seen it. But now it's the like season. Damn, school has It's two guys. Like, come it on, it's so like, it's just, like mm-hmm. it, I get, but it just come on, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. Like we got to get back to some. Like you got to care. Mm-hmm. Like just show me that you care, man. Right. Like, and I, I, I shut up. Right. But right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying. But no, it's I just hard to that. watch it. Uh, like sometimes, man. And like for a while, I went like I wouldn't watch certain teams play for a long time. It's just bad basketball. Mm-hmm. And I'm just not gonna watch. Y'all just allowing guys to run up and down, just play freely, man, mm-hmm. and just jack shots. Yeah, 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 I just you know what I I watch something else. Right, he scored seventy one against us. Yes. Oh yeah, he did. I watched it. <laughs> he scored seventy one. Dame, yeah, Dame scored seventy one against them. I was sick to my stomach. Yeah. Whew. I don't know what that feel like. That must have been tough. KJ kept running there like that shit was going to come off. <laughs> he, took rebound, he took one shot, like really one dribble over half a point. He shot a three, and I'm like, there's no way he's making this. Hey, there's no way. I'm like, there's no way. He ran like that shit was going to come off. like, what? I looked up at half time. Yeah, like, that shit was going to be touching the rim. Well, he got no, he got a shot down. No, but the game, the game went against us. He yeah, was one shot. No, nobody brought that up. I did. Why are you bringing up old shit? Yeah, bringing up old shit. How much did he have? Yeah. He probably had like 30 something. That That's game. different. He had 40 at halftime against us. <laughs> he could have scored 90 if he wanted to. I truly believe if yeah. he if we didn't double team him, it didn't matter. he would have had 90 on He would have had 90. Wow. Like he was dribbling up the court. I'm running at him trying to get the ball out of his hands. No screen, nothing. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's crazy though how just some people can get in that zone though. Yeah, but like, do you think that's more him just being locked in in that special talent, or is that just byproduct of the NBA just being a little boat? Boat. Because you've seen some crazy explosions, like out of Kobe. Yeah, like I I watched the Kobe thing. Like we was playing Toronto the next game. Yeah, so I'm watching the game. So this is after the eighty one. I'm watching it. I'm watching the game. Yeah. Like, we playing Toronto the very next game. Okay. They're on a road trip. Okay. I'm in Denver. Yeah. I'm doing my homework. I'm West Coast trip. I'm watching the game. Yeah. You know, I'm watching. I'm like. He got it going. I'm like, oh, he gonna have a, you know, on the night. I mean, he's gonna have fifty. I'm like, he got it going. I'm like, easy six. <laughs> <laughs> and it's I'm third like, quarter. Yes, and I'm like, and I'm, t- I'm at home. I'm, I'm like, ain't no way. This motherfucker <laughs> might have seventy. Man. Like, yo, he got to like seventy four, seventy. I'm like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> no way. So we play Toronto next game. I'm, you know, I'm in the game talking cash. Yeah. Did y'all really just get this eighty one? <laughs> like, come on, man. Y'all didn't play no. Y'all, yeah. y'all gonna do nothing? <laughs> oh, they was hot. Yeah. But yeah, no. Nah, just seeing it live, man. Like Kobe, was, like he was taking his day out on people. Because mm-hmm. he had moments that year where he had sixty and didn't play in the fourth. Yeah. yeah. So you knew it was coming at some point. Yes. A, a, a bigger night. Yeah, That's I, the crazy part about it. I seen Melo go off in quarters, like 33 in the quarter, the 60 in the garden. 
Steph went crazy mm-hmm. when I was with the Knicks on us. <laughs> Listen, yo. Oh, yeah. Hey, just got I was over there like, yo. <laughs> it's my this, first time seeing him live. Yeah, this different. I'm a, like, yo, <laughs> this is – he made – he in and out, behind the back in front of our bench, man, and let that thing scream. Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Big fan. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is a spectacle, man, to see him do that from that range. <laughs> The difficulty of shots, like it, yeah. it, it is. Like even when you're playing against him, it's oh like God, league. Like we right. was talking about it because we played them, and he went off for fifty against us this season. But I thought I was gonna lock him up that game. Like, <laughs> I did, that was my assignment. You got Steph, bet. Like put I'm feeling good. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put some length on him. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get over those put screens. Ooh, don't worry about yeah. it. Like you ain't gotta come off. I'm, I'm gonna get over those screens. Man, it was like I think I think whatever our game plan was, like. We were scratching that shit by like middle of the first quarter. Like, all right, P, you're not gonna guard him like this. <laughs> you're gonna guard him like yeah. that now, cause we can't. Like, we don't got nothing for yeah. this. He gave us 42 and put y'all to bed. Yeah, too. we was in Houston and his first half was shitty. Yeah, and we then like, then oh, we like, oh, we like, oh, he's he taking his night off. Snoozing on him. All right, yeah. <laughs> Came in out of the second half. I had like 40 in the second half. Yeah. I'm like, shit. Game winner. Yeah. Yeah. I go home. So scoring outputs, right? We played Orlando when I was with the Nets, and Tracy McGrady had 74 points in two days, and I thought he went crazy. In two days. Set me home and home. Yeah. And I thought he went na- nuts. That, I mean, for, you know for a lot. That's just, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, and I'm guarding him. He's <laughs> making everything. <laughs> and I'm like, and that's two games. Kid 74. Yeah. And that, he was going Not, 71, like, on a one one night. 60, 65, yeah. 60. Like, you know, he, I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. Like that, and, and Mac a score. Right, right. He's leading the league of scoring at the right. time. And that was like, but it's like, that's the new league. Yeah, and then now man. you got James. James is doing that. Well, he was doing that. The Houston James, he was doing that 60. 60 point triple doubles. With a triple dub with 15 assists to go with it. 18 rebounds. Like, it, it, dudes is doing numbers like that. And now you got centers doing it. Now you – come on now. <laughs> 50 point triple doubles. Come on now. Yeah, you couldn't even guard James back then. People was guarding him to the side, guarding him behind them. That was the dumbest shit I saw when uh, Utah did that. Yeah, I'm like, behind him. Yeah, like, so you going to let him shoot? You going like, to let him – like <laughs> – that don't make sense to me because y'all don't want to. So you don't want to foul, so you just gonna let him shoot. Like play don't behind him. Like. Yeah, listen, man. And this is how I know these kids that they coaching just do what the hell ever you tell them to do because ain't no way feasible, dog. Yeah, you could have came in the locker room <laughs> and said this the way we gonna guard this man, and I said okay. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. And I said, you know what? You're right, coach. We're gonna it, play him that way. <laughs> Man, I, man, if you don't get your ass yeah. out of here, man, ain't no way in hell we playing that man that way. <laughs> right. Because it's not just the coaches. The players got to co-sign off that, too. Yes, that's and what they I'm was, saying. And they, they was cool doing, with that. Yeah, like, yeah, we, you know what, coach? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. <laughs> no, it's not. Whoever thought of it should be fired. Right. My situation, I feel like it was different. Like, I'm in Houston. I'm with a whole bunch of, you know what I'm saying, young guys. So, I ain't, like, I spoke up. But, like, there was more I could say. Mm-hmm. And I felt like. You feel me? Like, since it's, I'm young and everyone else is younger, and obviously our coaches, you know what I'm saying? Most of them have been around for a while. It was just like, it's not my place mm-hmm. to a certain extent. So, like, when did you, you know what I'm saying, really, really start speaking up, like, once you got in? I started speaking up, like... You know what I'm saying? The coaches specifically. Oh, to the coaches. Yeah. Um, just, like, shit, like, you I know what I'm saying? I would say, like, saying? my fifth, sixth year, like... yeah. Uh, maybe like like four or fifth year. Yeah. But to be honest, I was like very fortunate at the time. Dan Burke was like our defensive coach and he was a hell of a coach. One yeah. of the best coaches that I've had from the defensive standpoint. So it was honestly like when he said shit and, and we were known for being one of the best defensive teams. Like yeah. we were number one for multiple years yeah. on defense. So yeah. what he, the shit he used to say was golden to me. But it just got to a point where I just knew like, all right, come on now. Like that... That may be cool for 29 of the other yeah. guards at this position, but, but that shit ain't working on him. Yeah. Like, we got to do this. Or, Roy, you got to come up higher. Like, yeah. I can't. Like, I'm going to get clinked up out here. Like, yeah. I need you up. So, that probably happened, like, my fourth, fifth year in the league. Yeah. Where I was – I started to put my knowledge of the game yeah. into into really thinking it through. Like, for sure. there's no way we going we gonna to be successful mm-hmm. if we guard them like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. that's when I started, you know, yeah. putting my input on the game. Yeah. So before we wrap it up, I want to ask you guys one last question. 
Um, KJ, who do you think the best player your dad played against was? He can tell you. I mean, Michael Jordan was on the Wizards when he played them, but he can let you know what happened. <laughs> Are you yeah, cussing that? I OG? remember that. OG, I MJ? Too, 40. I, was, I was too young. <laughs> what I remember is Kobe for sure. Like, I mean, he was in Denver. He played, you know what I'm saying, Kobe in the playoffs and stuff like that. I mean, I remember, I think, I, what I think is that, I don't know if it was the playoffs or whatever. I think they beat them. Lakers beat the Nuggets, and I uh, asked them if I could get a signed pair of shoes from Kobe, game one shoes, and you know what I'm saying, we have them to this day, so... Kobe, what I can remember, and then he told me a story about Michael Jordan, and I think he was in his 40s, and he gave him 40, all jumpers, didn't touch the paint. Mm. So, Footwork. Footwork, block work. Uh, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. And, you know, I'm eager. I'm starting. <laughs> Pogo stick. Oh, shit, he ain't shooting yet. Oh, shit, he ain't shooting yet. <laughs> if you get the block one, like, yeah, shit, I block MJ. Might, yeah. You know what I mean? So, KJ, who, you, who do you think the best player your daddy played with growing up? Probably Carmelo. It's a good one. Melo, I mean, you could put AI in there. You could put J Kid. I mean, he played with, you know what I'm saying, a good amount of Hall of Famers. I mean, it just, you know what I'm saying, it depends. You know what I'm saying? What you looking what for? You looking for? <laughs> right. I mean, Jay, That's what you looking for? You got heavyweights in there. J Kid, he played with him. I really don't remember. I was too young. But like Melo, I really, you know what I'm saying? I was going to practices with him, going to games. Whenever he went to the game, I was going to the game with him early. So, you know what I'm saying? I was around for that. So, Probably, of my recollection, probably Melo, for sure. You agree with any pops? Yeah, no, nah, Melo's the best scorer I didn't play. Well, shit, that's hard to say when I played with Chuck, too. Mm -hmm. So, geez. Um, yeah, I mean, I played with some dogs, man. I played with Chauncey. Uh, uh, I'm a big, big shot fan. Um, Melo. Top two. J-Kid. Play with CP. CP. Oh, J-Kid. Yeah, you going to play with everybody. VC. No, nah, I went on that went team. On VC? No, nah, they traded. That was just RJ. That yeah, was there with yeah, you. Yeah, oh, we'd have VC. We'd have won the championship. We'd have VC, yeah. So we was going to win one if they didn't get rid of me without VC. So you ask me, but hey, that's just my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, yeah, no, nah, man. Um, I played with some dogs, man. I played with some really, you know what I'm saying? I played with some, some underrated players that people don't give enough respect to that with some, some animals, man. So. Well, there you have it. The OG has spoken. Clipper Nation, that's a wrap on the episode. Shout out T-Man who came through earlier. Shout out the OG and the YG who came after them. We appreciate y'all stepping through, OG. I do. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah. I do. We gonna connect. And uh, it's a wrap. Podcast peace.